Good day, everyone. This is Pollock Needles, and welcome to DDO Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in DDO and on the tabletop. And please welcome my co-host from Ravenloft, Dracula. Hey now, everybody. How's it going? Hello there, Drac. How are you? Ready for episode 250? I know. Is that not crazy that we are at 250 episodes of this silly little podcast we do? It's crazy. Yeah. We were actually talking about it before the show. If you want to get technical about it, we're actually <laughs> past 250. We're probably closer to 300 at this point. Well, I don't know. I'd have to count. but Because we've had a lot of like special episodes and some interview episodes that dropped that I didn't actually number as a podcast episode. So it depends. What is your definition of a podcast episode, I guess? But yeah. we'll but just go with the last the... time we've had a special episode. Um, let me see. Today? <laughs> oh, yes. There is. Spoiler for later in the show, but of course it's in your podcast feed now, so you know that. But uh, but no, it's just great. It's, it's pretty amazing that we have hit 250 episodes. Uh, I'm sure there's people out there that are going, how the hell did you do 250 episodes of this show? And I yeah, say to yeah. you, I have no idea. <laughs> no, I... To be if and I think I've mentioned this before when we started this thing, I didn't think we'd make it past a hundred to be honest. But yet here we are, and I do believe I would have to fact check this. I'm going to say this blindly without actually fact checking it, but I think we are now with the damsels of DDO and DDO cast as the longest-running DDO podcast. Uh, we have more episodes than the Damsels, and DDO cast has more episodes as of us. But the other DDO podcasts that were around, most of them didn't get past, like, 100, 150. So that's pretty awesome. We have three DDO podcasts that are still going strong. Then let's have a look at our game news, and we are going to begin with a... Producer's letter that has some of us puzzled, I think. <laughs> yes, this is a very puzzling producer's letter. And number one, it was like, I didn't figure this was going to be out until a little bit later on. And then it just kind of dropped one night. It was like, oh, hey, look, here's a producer's letter. <clears throat> so, yeah, let's let's get into this because I have feelings on this. And we'll see if Pine Leaf does to you, but... From our executive producer, Severlin, a look ahead. The producer's letter, January 2020. We're entering a new decade with grand plans for Dungeons & Dragons Online. I am writing today to share some of our ideas with you. This past decade, plus, has been an amazing adventure, and we thank you for being a part of it. Okay, we're good so far. Sounds fine. We're kicking off 2020. With a bit of polish and refresh to two of DDO's most historic adventure packs, The Catacombs and Delaire's Tombs. Both of these adventures will get epic versions in our next game update, which will also feature the previously announced uh, Alchemist class. The Alchemix mixes and matches spells to create powerful reactions to help allies and incinerate foes. Expect Update 45 to arrive in February. Okay. All right, that all sounds nice. Then again, sounds good. We we knew all that. We're on a roll, right? Yeah. See, season one of the Hardcore League was met with enthusiasm and excitement. So we're making it a reoccurring event. No shock there. I don't think there's one person listening to my voice right now that is shocked there is going to be a season two of Hardcore Especially League. Especially after they made some of the terms that they use like the end of season one and stuff like that yeah exactly so anyway in season two of the hardcore league mortality will be replaced by ddo's classic foe eritrakos who will empower new champions with devilish powers expect future seasons to test your skill in how you build and play characters in addition to new rewards you will read more about these changes we have in the near future Okay, again, not a big shock. Kind of shocked that Mortality is not going to be back. It's going to be Eritrakos. 
It sounds you know, like like people ev- be happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bonnie Bue. Um, it sounds like every season uh, they're going to swap out mortality for somebody else. Like I said, this time it's going to be Eric Dracos. Next time it'll be somebody else. Okay. Then again, not a big shock. It's okay. Uh, I'm not super excited about Hardcore 2. It's really going to have to see what the rewards are. I'll probably do it again um, if Mithri wants to do it again with me i will probably do it again we'll see well i don't know i don't see myself jumping into (laughs) season two (laughs) it really just depends but okay now let's get into it Uh uh-oh 2020 will also bring a long-standing community request to the game the 64-bit client okay i guess that's overdue the 64-bit client can improve the overall performance of the game for many, and we look forward to its release later this year. We also have user interface improvements planned for the shared account bank to make it easier to store, sort, and access the items you've collected. Other quality of life improvements are in the planning stages as well. We'll talk about that more later in the year. Hmm. So now, we knew about the shared bank thing because we have talked about that because that's been previewed on the Mania. Right. And this, 64-bit is... It's is, been rumored for a while, but they were kind of... I asked them about that several times when... I, I've talked to the devs and talked to Seb, and I always got the... Ah, we'll talk about it when it's ready. Yeah, we want to do it sometimes. So, sounds like the work is there. <clears throat> Lotro has had it for a while. Yeah. Now, I think I'm more likely to use it in DDO than I am to, to in Lotro, simply because of... In Lotro, it's in the 64 bit con- client, it's more of a pain to switch between servers than in the 32 bit client. Oh, okay. But, so in Lotro, I'm constantly changing servers. Or maybe not constantly, but it's it's not unknown for me to in the same day want to bounce between servers without having to go all the way out, get out of the app, client, and all that stuff. Gotcha. So am, okay. So I don't use the 64-bit client on Lotro, but in DDO, I don't switch around servers all that often. So even if they do have the same issue with DDO, I don't think it's going to be a problem with me. Okay. So all is good. Okay. Fine. S- all right. Spring is going to bring a new adventure pack set in Stormreach. The gatekeepers need your help to determine the fate of some missing acolytes in the Cerulean Hills. Oh, you will that, inv- that sounds useful. Yeah, you will investigate the sudden appearance of a strange hut in the harbor. Hut. In the summer, we're considering a new adventure pack in addition to some legendary versions of some well-known raids. But... They're going to keep that unannounced for now. All right, bye. So I'm excited about the new adventure pack. New adventure packs are always good. Uh, sounds kind of fun. I, I like the story where it's going so far. All right, we're good. Okay, good. So now let's gaze further into the second half of the year. They are thrilled to share news about our next expansion, Ooh. which will see players travel into a mystical plane of the Feywild. Joining characters on their trip will be the next new player character race, the Shifter, capable of temporarily embracing the bestial aspects to rend enemies and survive. And how is this different from a druid? I have no idea. Other than in pen and paper, Shifters are werewolves. They were bred from werewolves so they have a lot of werewolf type abilities and they're they're very very werewolfy do they have ties to the moons yes so i I guess that's gonna make a difference i don't know i'm so confused about this i'm like why the shifter and going back why the Feywild? I don't know. I am so, I, I've got so many questions about this. Okay. Now, that is a question concerning werewolves. When you're in a world that has so many moons, what is the lore behind how werewolves work? Because in 
they are on folklore. Of course, there's only one moon to worry about. Right. That werewolves work totally different. They don't. Oh. They don't rely on the moon. Actually. Oh, they don't rely no. on the moon. No, they do not. Okay. So they can, and I'll, it it depends what like level I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, werewolf you are, you can shape shift at will. Okay. So you don't need the moon to be, and that's kind of where the shifter comes in, because the the most shifters can shift into a werewolf type form. At least in pen and paper, I have no idea what what they're going to do in DDO, and then again, I don't know how they're going to make this vastly different from a druid either yeah so and then let's talk about this expansion <clears throat> number one uh, okay they say the second half of the year so uh, that'll be about one year from when sharn came out am, am i right on the date on that or am i getting well my... sharn came out mid-year okay so technically, yeah, but I thought that Sharn was late first half, or was it early second? Um, let me look that up right now. But I just, I, I don't understand, number one, why we're even getting another expansion so soon. It seems like to me it's awfully soon to be getting another expansion. It does sound soon. Uh, Masterminds of Sharn, update 42... Um, da, 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 released on May fourteenth. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yes, it it released on May fourteenth. So, if they say second half of twenty twenty, so that'll be just about we'll we'll say close close to a year. Do we really need another expansion? I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I like new content. I like expansions because that means, you know, the game is still viable. It's still uh, making money, one would assume, if they're doing expansions and stuff. That's good. But I got and it pains me to say this. It really does. I'm not jumping up and down for a Feywild expansion. (laughs) <laughs> not in the least bit well yeah that sounds almost more up my alley than yours that's for sure. right yeah oh yeah definitely uh just i'm not i'm just i'm puzzled i'm so completely puzzled at why the feywild if you're not familiar with it the feywild is known as the plane of the fairy um it's very think everything fairy and that's what you're going to find in the feywild and the feywild is uh, and then again this is all pen and paper so i you know maybe they'll twist this all around in ddo i mean i don't know uh feywild uh, there's different uh territories that are split up between them uh you got a lot of elves a lot of elderin a lot of fairies uh, it's just kind of weird. There is like an underdark section of it that's called the Fade Dark. That would be kind of cool to go into. Uh, but it it's sounds just like some place you'll find some drow. <laughs> yeah, there's drow. There's also uh, quite a few other things in there. Uh, there is some actually titans that are down there that are like Fey titans. Fey um, titans. Yeah, yeah, they're. <laughs> They're a strange thing, but wow, can they do a lot of damage in pen and paper. But I just, I don't, I don't get it at all whatsoever. And like I said, I'm not, sorry, Standing Stone, but until you release more information on this and tell me why I should be excited about this, I'm not excited about this at all. Maybe I'll be wrong. And once we start getting more information about it and we get previews on the money, which is going to be a far, 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 far down the road, because once again, this is second half of the year. Um, I guess I'll hold, I'll, I'll hold my judgment, but I'm not excited. So you're not wild about the Fey wild. <laughs> no, not at all. Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Seb does say about uh, this, uh, let's see. Another thing we can say today about the upcoming Feywild expansion is that you will need to learn new powerful ways to overcome the challenge. And doing so will gain you the experience necessary to push past level 30 for the first time in DDO history. So they're raising the level cap. Well, not so fast. Oh, what? (laughs) They didn't actually say they were raising the level cap. You're going to push past level 30. Does that mean the level cap is going up? Maybe. You mean the enemies? Uh, No, no. No, because how it's worded in the producer's letter is you will gain the experience necessary to push past level 30 for the first time in DDO history. But normally, when if you go back to other producer's letters, when they talk about uh, when like the level cap was raised from 20 to 30, even from, from 10 to 20, they specifically state the level cap is being raised to whatever level. They didn't say that this time. So is this going to be like some new epic levels that you can get? Or is it actually going to be new levels? I've looked on the forums. People are asking about this. None of the devs are talking. So there's wild speculation at this point what this could mean. What is the... Is there a level cap in pen and paper right now? It is... Oh, God, 30, I think. Let me look that up. It's like 20, 20 or 30. Well, 20, I know, in... was when we went into epic levels, which is what, which is where right. they do that DDO. Of course, that's, of course, that's three point whatever. Yeah, because in uh, 5e, there is no uh, ep- epic levels or legendary levels. Uh, 20 is the tier. And that is tier 4, which is level 17 to 20. Okay. So I thought it was 20. I, I didn't think you... All right. But in but in version 3, which is what DDO is ostensibly based right. on... Right. Uh, th- it was probably 30. I- 30, yeah. Because 30 and then you could start doing... Um, God, I can't remember what they were called in third edition. They weren't legendary. Yeah. Well, um, since I never hit twenty, I never really. Yeah. <laughs> I only did like that. one time. Uh, but it, anyway, so yeah, so okay, I something's gonna happen where we're gonna push past level thirty. Be it we're gonna go to level fifty, sixty, maybe. Maybe it's some new kind of epic level thing they're doing. Maybe it's legendary levels. I I, I don't know. Who knows? Um, sure. Okay. I guess that's kind of cool. Uh, I want to see exactly how they're going to do this. There's one more surprise in store for 2020, finally. What? Yeah, what's that? The above is a high-level roadmap for our current schedule, which is all that we just talked about. As always, the roadmap can change, and we will endeavor to let you know how things are going as plans become reality. We are very thankful for your support for the game for more than a decade, and we're thrilled to embark on a new decade adventure with you. Thank you, Seb. Okay. So there's other surprises in store. They're not talking about them. Well, Uh, yes, because there are always things that... Right. They always have things on the... So on the, the grill, yes. The yeah, exactly. They're always stoking the fires as well. So too long didn't read version. Sixty four bit client. Feywild expansion. Shifter class. Hardcore season two. Catacombs Delaris Tomb. Epic versions. Uh is that about oh, and the Alchemist. What's missing? From the list that I just talked about. See, well, a certain island of dinosaurs, I think. Uh huh. Where's my Isle of Dread, Standing Stone? 
why isn't this mentioned in here? And it's like, oh, by the way, we're going to take it to the Isle of Dread in the fall of 2020 or whatever. What happened to the Isle of Dread? I want my dinosaurs standing stone. I want my dinosaurs. <laughs> what were your dinosaurs? Where are they at? Yeah, that concerns me greatly that they did not mention anything about Isla Dread or any other classic pack for that matter. We always get a classic pack. Every year, we get some form of classic pack. Maybe that's one of those things that's still under the category of other surprises in store. I hope to God it is because I always enjoy what uh, they do with, with classic packs. So I don't know. I, I guess we'll see, but there you go. There's our producer's letter that I have many, many questions about. <laughs> you, you wish you could get sent into a room and say, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. And trust me, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to get an interview with him right now because I have questions, so many questions. Yeah. And I'm sure he'll have no answers whatsoever, but I have questions. You have questions. So what's your thoughts on all this? I mean, I gave mine opinions uh, a lot when i was reading about that so <laughs> so what about you well let's see well catacombs and delirious to epic you know i don't play epic so it's sort of whatever to me alchemist though i am looking forward to yeah we'll, i will see how much i like it when i have a chance to try it have they put it on lamania yet or yes it's been the last two lamania builds yeah uh, that's even and i've of course missed it. those last two lamania builds so... me as well yeah. but yes so i am going to have to try that out whether that's when it comes next one lamania or whether that's when it's released alive i don't know but i'm at least going to as soon as it comes out that will be the next class I will try for my runs through, Naturally. through the Borderlands because I do have that little thing that's supposed to be going through all the classes in the Borderlands this year. Yep. So let's. See. So I'm hoping that then to to do that one. Let's see. Season one Hardcore League. I'm mean, season two of Hardcore League. I'm not particularly care about that all that much <laughs> 64 bit client well i guess because i haven't had ddo crashing on me all that often that i've not been really thinking about 64 bit client though maybe it'll help with the lag but it would have to be lag based on your side because if we both lag at the same time it's probably not client side it's probably server side that would be server side yeah yeah and if it's server side it's not going to help with server side issues in the least let's see the new hut appearing in the harbor i have no idea what that's all about but yeah i'm i'm excited for that quest back that sounds like it's going to be fun all right and are you sure it's not going to send you to the isle of dread or anything like that I doubt it because the way it was worded. Uh, let me scroll back up here. Um, da, 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 let's see. A new adventure pack set in Stormreach. The gatekeepers need your help to determine the fate of some missing acolytes in the Cerulean Hills. Okay, you, you, you're right. And so unless the so unless these ac acolytes are oh that's right it's set in the Cerulean Hills. Mm -hmm. Yes, you got a good point there. Hmm. Unless the strange hut, the strange hut sends you to the Isle of Dread. Yeah, but somehow I doubt it. All right. As for the Feywild, it's like, well, okay. I have to admit that even though I am probably more inclined to the Fey than you are, it is pretty much meh. <laughs> I yeah, I just I I I don't get it. I don't. And, I don't get it at all. Sorry, SSG, but I don't get it. As as for the shifter, well, oh, that's right. This is a race instead of a class, which is a. I'm almost thinking, what? Or, or is or is are the shifters going to be like Bjornings, where they're a race and a class? And the Bjornings are a shifter class or, or a shifter race. And that now I'm talking about, of course, the other game when I talk about right. The yeah, you're talking about Lotro. Um, maybe because it does say it's a, it's a character race. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's yeah. weird. So that's a little bit 
weird. Now, in pen and paper, can shifters be any class? Yes. Okay. All right. So it's just sort of a weird and, template to add to the back. And yeah, and then you you retain your whole werewolf lycanthry abilities through anything. All right. So you can be a rogue that turns into a werewolf if you would want to. But like I said, I don't know what SSG is going to do with it because in pen and paper they're very much werewolf based, which intrigues me. Because I do like, I do enjoy werewolves. I like vampires better, of course. Duh. But. Oh, duh. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, well, no, duh. Um, but where I do enjoy werewolves, so we'll see. I don't know. Like I said, at this point, I have way more questions than I do answers. Very well. So, so but there's our producer's letter, 2020. At least they have a roadmap. Uh, yes. We're going to get plenty of DDO in 2020, which is awesome. That's the good thing we can take out of this. Then let's head into our next item, which is the DDO Winter Games are now underway. Yay, Winter Games, ice skating, ice jumping, all of the icy, wintry stuff is now available for you. Uh, you can go over and look at the guide. I'll link that in the show notes if you need help with that. But yes, if you log into the game, you can tell that the Winter Games are underway because everything is frozen over and snowing everywhere. Yeah, that's usually a sign of such a thing. <laughs> or there's a dragon attacking. Some, you know. Yeah, either way, it's either bad. the Winter Games are back or there's a dragon, a ice dragon attacking your village. Either way, it's all good. Then next we have our DDO Chronicle, issue 368, where we have zombies with axes. Zombies with axes. That sounds like a start of a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> In the community spotlight of our Chronicle, the Alchemist arrives in update 44. You can start build planning now. Uh, in the new Alchemist sub forum, which they have just launched over on the forums. So jump over and get all the Alchemist goodness. As we just talked about, uh, Winter Games has arrived. The Rizia Ice Games and the Evening Star Midwinter Festival is going to run through February 11th. So you have a few more days to get in on the ice skating goodness. In our fan site news section, uh, we want to be a vampire, apparently. At least one of us here on this podcast wants to be yeah. a vampire. <laughs> I'll let the audience try to figure out which one that is. I I, I think it won't be too difficult. For uh, probably not. <laughs> you have uh, a 50-50 shot of getting it right, and I'm pretty sure people will get it right. But we'll see. <laughs> DDO Cast is continuing their review of uh, DDO in 2019. Click over and check out the new episode for DDO Cast. Don't forget about DDO Stream. That is the great place to find all the great streamers. Brock and Friends, Fridays on Ice, and more. Twitch also has a lot of people streaming. Newbie Karabra finishes a leveling, gui leveling guide. Words are hard again for me. Planky makes a wood elf. And Luxury Smooth makes a summoning lich. Luxury Smooth. That is a great name. <laughs> There's also lots of people over on YouTube streaming. Samus Garobo, The Ice Damon, Tath, and more. So check out all the great streamers and gameplay videos over on YouTube. We have a... No, we don't have... Oh, yeah, we do. Sorry, I had to scroll up. A Chronicle comment this week, which I have not even read this comment. So I'm going into this blind. So see if I can think of something funny off the top of my head. What do kobolds get each other for their birthdays? Shangies! You stole my answer, finally. <laughs> that was my answer. It's the first thing I thought of. Appropriate, yes. <laughs> we'll uh, move on from the shinies and go into the screenshot of the week, which I guess could be considered kind of shiny because it's... A shiny-ish screenshot. Uh, Halloran meditates while appreciating the beauty of the storm horns in the 449th DDO screenshot of the week. Uh, yes, very snowy, very wintry, very meditating. Good job on the screenshot. Very nice there. Well, that means about a year from now, looks like we'll be celebrating the 
500th? Then let's have a look at what's on sale this week. What's on sale? We have the Bigger is Better sale, 25% off Gold Seal Elixirs of Sovereign Healing, 100 of those, 25% off. Superior Spell Point Potions, 100 of those as well. Sovereign Guild Renowned Elixirs, 25 of those. The Colossal Ingredient and Augment Bags, all at 25% off during the Bigger is Better sale. Now through February the 6th, our weekly coupon code gets you a free Gold Seal Elixir of Moderate Healing, 10 of those. Coupon code Gold Mod Heal G O L D M O D H E A L uh, through February the sixth as well. Then let's into our site news where we had a little discussion on U forty five. Well, okay, Drac had a little discussion on U forty five balance changes because I presume he held that little interview at some play time of the night that only a well i'm not going i don't want to give away a certain question <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> choose your words wisely yes. patrick from ddo cast and i had a little chat about the upcoming balance changes uh, that will be uh here with update 45 uh, we talked about doing this uh my plan actually this wasn't supposed to be a special podcast release What I was going to do is we were going to kind of splice this into the show tonight. So it just sounded like one cohesive long podcast. And then after him and I got done recording this, it was an hour and five minutes long. So I'm like, it's going to be a special podcast episode. Because if not, this episode is going to be about three hours long probably. So... (laughs) There you go. So yeah, that's why you're getting two podcasts this week, people. Not just one, but two. Two for the price of one. Because, <laughs> yep, this episode will come out Wednesday like it always does. Uh, the balance change discussion hit today. So if you're subscribed to the podcast feed or subscribed to us over on YouTube, you have it waiting for you if you haven't listened to it yet. Right. And any nice conclusions there, or are you going to say no spoilers? <laughs> <laughs> Just the big takeaway is we've been through this before. Balance changes have happened. They're always going to do this. It's an MMO. It's a living, breathing game. Things are going to change. They have to balance things to make gameplay good. We've got through it before. We'll get through it this time. Some of the changes, not so good, but will survive we will survive all right i guess that sort of works out on there so let's head into our week in gaming and what were you up to I played a little bit of DDO. Uh, My Wooflock, who is level 23, almost level 24. Uh, That is the one that I'm playing with Saba, where I'm trying to get to level 28, which was one of my goals. Saba decided to help me with that. We did the Spinner of Shadows on Epic Hard. Okay. That quest sucks. I hate that quest so much. I will always hate that quest. We managed to get through it. Uh, I just just like that. I okay let me rephrase that (laughs) I don't like the mechanics of that quest Uh, of course everybody knows the spinner shadows is the one where you have to go kill the little spiders to get the things to light the lanterns to trap the spinner shadows yada 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 so you got to go out get some go back repeat fight her because she attacks you knock her down rinse repeat rinse repeat rinse repeat i just i hate 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 that quest but at least it's done out of the way <clears throat> then we did uh beyond the rift did that on epic art as well of course that is the one that leads you over to evening star that's when we got to go through the uh, underdark rent actually uh, jumped on and joined us for that 
so that was a fun time. And then after we made it to Evening Star, uh, Saba said, let's do some challenges because that's a lot of experience. So keep in mind I'm level 23. Rent and Saba jumped on a little higher level characters. They jumped on their level, I think they were 28. Uh, Saba was 30, and I think Ren jumped, jumped on to 28, but I'm still 23. So we did the two Evening Star challenges, which are the uh, which is the uh, Underdark Arenas, which is Fight to the Finish and Ring of Fire. We did those on level 30. Okay. That was fun. We actually did okay until Ring of Fire. We decided to do the one bonus challenge at the end and almost party wiped. Uh, other than that, it wasn't actually too bad. Uh, even though there was seven levels higher than me. And Saba was right. That was some hella XP for those. Uh, that's what bumped me almost to 24. It's just doing those two challenges. That was a ton of XP. And they were fun, too. I enjoyed them. Ooh, a challenge that was fun? Yeah, exactly. They were, they were really fun. Have we ever, I don't, have we ever done those two challenges? I don't know if we've ever done those two. I know well, we've done some of the is, challenges. Do they have a lower version of those challenges? Because some challenges have they do. a minimum yes. level. Yes, they do. I think that one, uh, whatever Evening Star starts at, which I'm drawing a blank right now. Well, Evening Star starts around level 15. So, yeah, I do believe they have, like, a level 15, 16, 17, 18, somewhere around in there. So they do have a much lower version of, of those challenges. Because I know we've done some of the other Evening Star challenges, but I don't remember if we've done the arena ones. They're just, you're in an arena. I mean, duh, spoiler alert from the name. Uh, and you just fight is all you do. So maybe we'll we'll have to do those because I don't think you and I have done those two. I know I've done them before with Lessa before, but I'm pretty sure you and I have never done them. So maybe we'll have to write that down on something to do to try so you can say you have at least tried them. And that, other than what I did with you, is what I did in DDO. I'll let you talk about that, as you always do. Uh, I did play some uh, other video games over on the Xbox One uh, as part of the uh, Game Pass they have on Xbox One. I played uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is the spiritual successor to the Castlevania series. So I was all over that. I'm about maybe halfway through it. My God, that game is hard. So fun, but wow, it is hard. Uh, also played Munchkin Quacked Quest, which is the video game version of Munchkin. It's pretty much Munchkin the video game. <laughs> so if you enjoy Munchkin Shock. and all the weirdness of Munchkin, you'll enjoy it. It's super fun. <clears throat> and I also tried Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire, all right. Was not impressed. <laughs> well, I remember I played it a little bit back during the early access days, but it, it knows I haven't played it much recently. So Yeah, I just, I like I said, thank God it was on Game Pass, so I didn't have to pay for it. Well, I mean, technically I did for the Game Pass, but anyway, um, just... Super glad I didn't actually buy the game because yeah, it was I just was not impressed. I played it for maybe fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, and I'm like, yeah, that's enough of this. Oh boy, that it, didn't last long. It 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 had potential. It's just I don't know. There's just a lot of weird things about it. But maybe I'll try it again. Maybe I'll give it another chance. Um, we'll see about that though. Then I did play some uh, D and D Five E. That was uh, part of D and D Night on DDL Stream. We ran uh, another episode of the Out of the Abyss campaign. Still in the Underdark. Still trying to get the heck out. And then uh, we also recorded an episode of D and D Casplat. Uh, that is going to air, I think, next week. We pre-recorded it, so. Uh, of course, that's Patrick's game with uh, Rent and Tay, Saba, myself, uh, and Mithri. Uh, it was just Rent and Lessa and Tay and I that night, though. Uh, everybody else couldn't join. So so check that out. Like I said, I do believe that's going to air next week. 
Uh, that was a pre-recorded episode. And that uh, was pretty much my weekend gaming. I did a couple other things uh, that I'm not sure if I can talk about yet. So I'm just not going to talk about them. Because I don't want to yeah. break any embargoes. I'm pretty sure the one thing I did is under embargo. So uh, what did you do, Pine Leaf? All right. We will begin with what I did in DDO with you. And that is a... We were on our level 10 characters at Castle Ravenloft, where we ran Oath of Vengeance and a Raven at the door. And then, on my half orc Barbarian that I was having so much trouble with, if you remember that I, I had attempted to see if I could take a Barbarian into the Borderlands without a Cleric. Right, yep, I remember you talking about that last week. And it was pretty much splat, splat. Right, so I went into there, and first I tried Violent Delights, and when we had that final big fight, I got killed. I forgot how nasty that last fight could get, so I have a feeling it was probably part of the problem there. Yeah, that, that fight can get pretty nasty if you're not careful. Right. So despite having a cleric, that, that turned nasty in there. Then I went into decided, all right, let's try the other side. I went the treasure hunt, bugbear, bandits, and obstructing the orcs. And when I was doing obstructing the orcs, there's this point where you're supposed to destroy something in there. And when the the option, I look at the options, is there anything here that fits a half orc barbarian? And one of the options was to use spellcraft to do it. I said, okay, since nothing looks appropriate here, let me do the most stupidest, silliest one possible for a half yeah. barbarian. And that's spellcraft. That so, would be silly. Okay. Right. So I managed to destroy it using spellcraft, despite the fact that my skill is negative two. How did you do that? I have no clue in there. Obviously... In normal mode, they don't have very high standards. <laughs> I guess not. Did you roll like a natty 20 or something? Because yeah, that's crazy. I don't know what happened there, but yeah. That's insane. <laughs> then, this is at the point then when I finished up obstructing the orcs where I got enough XP to level to 20. But of course, my rule is I don't level to 20 until I'm ready to do the final dungeon so i went in to do what's your step and this is where i noticed the pattern where whenever i open up a chest i get a great ring if i were a spellcaster well apparently you are because you're solving <laughs> things with spellcraft <laughs> so apparently you are a spellcrafter ergo you're getting spellcrafting ring i suppose that's a possibility <laughs> Then Hobgoblin Horde, KHB, Violent. Then went back to Violent Delights, and this, that time things went a lot better. Finally, then leveled up to level two, went into total chaos. And my next, then, will be the ASMR Paladin. So, of course, I'll be doing my game ready to do my run that will be without a cleric. And I think an ASMR Paladin has a much better chance of surviving without a, cler without a cleric than a than a barbarian would because those shrines are going to be a lot kinder to me because I'm going to have decent healing skill probably and going to have a decent wisdom and all that fun stuff. But one of the weird things that happen is when I go in there, of course, if there are any die rolls up, I will roll the dice. So I roll the dice, both the daily and the weekly, and I chew the XP tablet as I normally do. and I guess I didn't realize how high I rolled on the gold because I clicked on that and it says it, it gave me the level two the leveling sound. Huh, nice. Wait, I said, okay. And I can't level up, of course, until I do those seven dungeons. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Because I haven't even started it yet. Because I was just getting prepped up so that I could be all ready, nice and ready when I'm about to head out and do the be and try the ASMR Paladin. And I'm hoping to have that all by the time they have the release of 
the next update because when the next update comes out of course i will want to try a alchemist but we'll see how that goes then in minecraft i finished up the mage rages for january and the i also started on my rendition of the temple of mereka which because i'm doing my cult of the arthropod so i'm doing the temple of mereka so i'm working on the sanctuary right now and for the pillars because in the temple of mereka now this is of course is from the against the cult of the reptile cause right where this particular temple is, they have this mosaic down there. And I was trying to think, what would the mosaic be made out of? Because at first I was thinking, well, maybe I could use terracotta. And I saw, no, I don't have any badlands in the area, so I can't get terracotta easily enough. I suppose I could collect huge, huge, huge amounts of clay bake the clay, and then dye it and get terracotta that way, but I don't That just seems like a lot of work. That sounds like a lot. So, in the, so what I decided to do is to use wood, is to use logs. Okay. For my, so I have a mosaic then on the floor made of logs. I had some ideas what I'll do. I just did a couple times, and finally, during this last week, I came up with a pattern that I'd like. So now I have my have that all set up and looking nice. Now the pillars in there are supposed to be tree trunks, great tree trunks that they use as pillars in there. I said, like, okay, fine. I will, it, this being Minecraft, I'm growing oaks in there and I'm growing oaks up and up and up. And the idea here is that when you grow an oak near a flower, there's a chance that a bee nest will go in there and I decided well look if this is the the arthropod version of the of the temple of Mereka obviously we're going to have bees nests attached to all these pillars so now I have all these bees flying all around inside the temple I haven't closed in the walls or anything like that yet but I could see that there are going to just be bees all over the place <laughs> and I get this done <laughs> so I'm Sort of finding that this is going to be a real thrill that we're going to have on there. But I figure agricultural goddess bees, that works together, right? Makes perfect sense to me. Makes so yeah. perfect sense, right. And then uh, in tabletop, hmm, I was a little bit busy in tabletop. Because they had this silicon thing in there. Because I told you I was going to do several silicons. So I started this particular silicon. Silicons last two weeks. Normally they last two weeks. They extended this one to a month. And sort of filling out a Yahtzee scorecard based on the letters of the games that you're playing in there. So I played Cartographers, Deep Space D6, Elder Sign, Friday, my first attempt at level four, which gives figure if it's my first attempt at level four on Friday, the result was that I got smashed by uh, smashed and killed completely. D-Day Dice, where I made my first attempt against a real beach where I invaded Omaha Beach and got into the bunker. And and of course when I got into the bunker the Germans all killed me so that didn't last very long. Dungeon Solitaire where I was killed by traps. Dungeon Roll where my where the knight that I was using managed to get through the dungeon fairly well. I think the dice were friendly to me or something, which was crazy compared to some of the other games. Especially cr unusual compared to what happened to me in D-Day Dice. Dizzle, where I failed to get many gems, so which reduced my final score compared to the last time I played. Catan Dice Game. You can see a, a dice game type pattern here. And when I was playing the Catan Dice game, I decided I must have borrowed your dice or something. It was... <laughs> that was that good, huh? That good, yes. Then, I played a game called Cobras. And the solo version of Cobras, the object of the game is to get 150 points. And see if you get 150 points or better. 
and I managed to score exactly 150. I, I was a bit surprised there. I didn't think I was going to do too well in that, but I managed to get through that in Cobras. Then Card Capture, which is a game I talked about a couple weeks ago, which is a deck builder using a regular deck of 52 cards. Which is effectively, and just in time, I managed to do that effectively win there. Octo Dice, where I had a good start and then a bad second round. So it was a mess score there. One Deck Dungeon, where I decided to try an archer against the dragon, and I think I must have used the Eagle Eye ability a little bit too often, because the Eagle Eye ability, you have to spend time in order to get an extra die or two in there. And yes, I didn't have enough time to get enough dice so I could really have a huge number of dice against the dragon. So obviously the dragon... The dragon wound up using my arrows as toothpicks after it finished eating me. Elevens is for one, where everything fell perfectly, I think, for me in that one. Then finished, where I missed a very important strategy until the near end. So as a result of that, I fell asleep for finishing my task. And falling asleep then ruined my next game, because La Granja No Siesta, yeah... I apparently couldn't fall asleep because I fell asleep the night before. <laughs> nope. So I couldn't get a proper siesta in there. So I lost basically because I was way back on the siesta part. Then Wingspan. And Wingspan, this time I actually managed to... F this time I had a better idea of how to plan in this game. So I had a much better game. And in fact, the, my score was so good that I'm obviously going to have to bump up the difficulty next time I play it. And then Eon's End Legacy, where I fought one of the legacy bosses and used my legacy mage. Unfortunately, I got a really, really nasty card at a really nasty time, which meant that out before I could recover anything in there and then was ground to bits. I think that if the timing were slightly differently, then I might have been able to survive long enough in order to actually win it, but, well, that happens in the end sometimes. Then Heliodox, The Last Sunset, where I felt like it was all putting out fires that I was doing and not trying to get ahead and actually get a decent score. I was using the original solo game that they had in there because to do with rules for the solo con or anything like this. So in order to use so I decided I was going to use all base game for that. The next time that I run Heliox, I'm very definitely going to use the deluxe set because it has a much better solo game in there than the original Heliox did. And then finally roll through the ages, the Iron Age where I got my a new high score for myself when I'm using a port strategy rather than a province strategy. So it was my second best round I had and the best with the port strategy. And that's it for the stuff that I did with Solo Con. I also played a game called Four Against Darkness, which is a which is a dungeon crawl, which is a single player dungeon crawl where you have a typical party of four that you're taking through the dungeon. And Which, trying to this piqued my interest when I seen that you played this because I have this I have yet to play it. Oh, you've yet to play it. I have yet to play it. I've read through it several times. I want to try it. It sounds fun. So tell me about your challenge, and then tell me what you thought about it. All right. Now this particular challenge because this what got me to do this was first of all some. Someone had just posted, I think it was Rolling Solo, had just posted their top 10 dungeon crawl games. Yes, yep. I watched that video. Great video, by the way, if you haven't watched it yet. Right. And one of the responses to that, well, I don't have a top 10, but I have a top one. And the one that they felt that the responder's top one was Four Against Darkness. After that, I was reminded that there was a Four Against Darkness challenge on the one player guild geek said all right tried this so i bought the pdf version of this 
which was eight dollars at drive through RPG. So I did okay. I went there, tried this, and got the party in it. Now, what was the challenge was that your party was preset for this challenge to be an elf and three wizards, which is as unbalanced a party as you can Yeah, face. that's pretty much the unbalanced of the unbalanced, I do believe. Yeah, I didn't catch that, unfortunately. It looks like we had a little d communication gaff in. Oh, there we go. Is that better? Yeah, it looks like my Discord dropped out for a second. Okay. There we go. Now we're better. Yeah, I just said, yeah, that is very, very unbalanced. It's very, very unbalanced. So that was, of course, part of the challenge in there. But I thought, all right, let me go to this canned one so I won't have to build my own dungeon all the way through so I can at least learn the combat rules and proceeding through there and how to move and all that. And when I go through later on, on my own, then I could worry about those rules about building the dungeon and stuff like that. Since in the basic game, you create a random dungeon as you're going through it. So you're exploring the dungeon and finding out what's there. Now, in this case, since it was a predefined dungeon, what they did is they had the dungeon rooms. They provided a map and they had dungeon rooms in spoiler tags on the post that was being used oh, okay. for there. So whenever you get to a new room, you, you click on the spoiler tag to find out what's actually in the room. And of course, my first time playing the game and with an unbalanced party, you could pretty much guess what happened. And that is that I got eventually overwhelmed with, well, not with minions, with some vermin. Now, I did misinterpret a, a couple of rules in there, or I think one or two might have been in my favor. And a big one that was against my favor was when I went to a room. I had a bow out at the time, and I thought, well, this wasn't appropriate. And I was surprised by some vermin, so they attacked me because they got their they got their first round. Then I had to spend a turn getting rid of the bow. Then I they attacked me again, so of course they overwhelmed me. I forgot though that if you have a bow, you get a free shot even if the opponents have surprise. So I had forgot about that little rule. So, so I might have been able to take care of some of them. If I that boat. But anyway, yeah, it seems like an interesting game in there. I will be trying it out a few more times, especially running it to see how a random dungeon works and stuff like that. Hmm. I might have to dig that out and play it then. Yeah. Now, I also watched a couple of videos of, I guess, the other one that some people are talking about in the solo community, and that's the D100 Dungeon. When I looked at those videos and all this stuff, ah, I don't know. It just seems to be overly detailed to me. And if you want it to be really, really detailed, D100 Dungeon might be better for you. If you, I think Four Against Darkness is a little bit more casual in its style. In other words, it's lighter in in how rules heavy it is or anything like that. Oh, okay. At least that's my impression of it so far. And that concludes what I did last week. So yeah, that was a busy week. I guess so. I don't I I just don't understand how you do it. Like when do you <laughs> sleep? When do you eat? Well, okay, actually this would have been two weeks because we didn't have a show last week, right? Oh, you're right, we didn't. Yeah, yeah. So that is actually two weeks, not just one week. Okay, all right. So I guess that's not as bad. But still, that's a lot of stuff you did. That is a lot of stuff, yes. We currently have 14 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support DDO players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. And we did not receive any emails this week, but if you'd like to send one, you can send it to podcast at DDO players.com and you can also follow us on Twitter the Players Alliance at Players Ally, DDO Players at DDO Players, Dracula at Dracula score 72 and Pineleaf at Piney Fields. And you can follow Drac on Twitch at Dracula underscore 72. The Players Alliance has two shows on Mondays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DD, we have yeah, DDO Players News and on Saturdays at 8 30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time we have Locha Players News. You can join us for our shows on ddoplayers.com slash live. That's all for tonight, and this is Polyphonic Goals reminding you to quest responsibly. <laughs>